the driving force behind this conference? Why did you feel it was necessary to begin this work? Well, it was the second conference to take place in Europe, and it was with AMEC, which is the Association of Media Evaluation and Communications, and the Institute of Public Relations. It was our second conference. It was in Barcelona. And it's the sort of conference where there's lots of speakers and things like that taking place. But we just felt that that forum gave a real opportunity to give something back to our industry that was, to be honest, severely lacking. And so with that in mind, we felt having all those delegates there and being able to pull the professional bodies together to work on these and endorse them meant that we had an opportunity to accomplish something that, to be honest, has never been done before. Excellent. So what are the Barcelona principles? Can you quickly describe them for me? Yes, certainly. Well, there are seven principles in total, and to be honest, a lot of them are not rocket science, as I would like to say. They are very straightforward, but they are setting the bar that allows everyone to be able to attain it. Um, you can go further, but hopefully you wouldn't go less, as it were. And the first one is really recognising the importance of goal setting and measurement. Measurement needs to be baked in at the beginning and it's really important that it's measured against the goals. And those goals have to be meaningful to the business. They need to be measurable, not wishy-washy as I would like to say. So that's the first one that to me is foundational within any public relations activity. The second one is looking at outcomes wherever possible rather than just outputs. So it's not just looking at the clippings book, but it's looking at the outcomes, what the effect is as a result of that activity that's done, what's the causational, that might be the causational, but what's the effect, what is the outcome, has it sold more product as a result, has it changed people's perceptions, has brand loyalty increased, what that is. The third one is looking at the effect on the business results and they should be measured so that when we're doing our public relations we're not just doing it in our own silo but we are integrating that into the overall business of the company. The fourth one is recognising that it's not just quantity but quality is important so if we are doing an activity, let's say it's a media campaign, it's important to measure the qualitative elements, not just the quantity. It's not just impressions, but it's looking at the tonality or sentiment, it's looking at the message resonance, the endorsement, any of those factors that are involved in getting good media coverage really. So we're looking to make sure that there's a qualitative element as well as just the quantitative element when measuring that aspect. The fifth one was the most hotly debated, I have to say, at the, the, um, at the conference, and that was the whole aspect of ABEs, Advertising Value Equivalents. And how we came down on that was that ABEs are not a me measure of the value of public relations. They're not a good measure, and I think that the majority of the audience would agree with that, accepting that there's still a lot of people who do it now and that therefore, while it's not recommended, if it must be done, it should reflect more than just a rate card, but needs to be considered actually what someone would pay, the negotiated rate, the impressions is probably more meaningful, reflecting the target audience and the quality, again, looking at those qualitative aspects, because I think for all too long we've actually um, hid behind ABEs, and I personally believe it's done our industry a big disservice. So that was a good one. Uh, the sixth one looked very much at the social media, which clearly is something that people are always interested in. And it's really declaring that social media is a discipline rather than a tool and that it should be measured. And like everything else, it should have objectives and all those other good things that we, 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 we should be demanding, if we don't already demand, of our other areas and that we should then look to measure against it, albeit some, for some people challenging these days. And the final one is about transparency and replicability. I got it right without losing it. <laughs> well, I can't do it a second time. <laughs> and for that it is making sure that whatever we're doing it's possible to emulate it a second time. So if that is media analysis, recognising the sources that the media is being collected from, any collection strings that are used, text strings to actually as triggers to pull that coverage, doing the um, 
declaring what you're actually coding against in terms of any matrix of content analysis and any algorithms or calculations that are used on it so that it's clear what it is you're looking at. And the same when you're looking at survey research. So you're saying the base side, the mar margin of error, what the questions are and the order of those questions. Therefore, anyone who's looking at a report or whatever can have a clear understanding of what you were setting out to do by your objectives, how you went about doing it, and therefore how meaningful that data is that they're looking at in their analysis. Excellent, thank you. It's a very nice overview of a long topic that we could sit here for hours and discuss. Um, in our session today, Pauline, you described a couple of different ways that these can be applied in a few different disciplines, in PR, in even uh, trade show marketing, and you touched a little bit on social media. I would like to hear a little bit more about some examples that you've seen of successful measurement in social media. Good question. First of all, before I even start that, I want to say that social media tends to cross a company. It's certainly not the domain of PR, and therefore, you know, there may be guardians of social media or whatever, but it, it, it can't be owned, social media, in that sense. So that in itself presents challenges with managing it or certainly measuring it. And I think that the, there are different areas you can do, I think, often to start by listening and deciding what you're wanting to accomplish through social media. So that goes back to number one, having your goals and then looking at how you're gonna measure against those goals. What are you seeking to achieve? And that may be listening, it may be engaging in conversations, it may be looking to change perceptions. If you are, like there's a great case study of an airline who actually uses social media and they track that against online sales. Mm -hmm. There's some good tools out there for looking at website interactions and things like that. So I think it's understanding what your objectives are and if you're not, if you haven't been doing it before, take some baby steps and make sure it's something you can maintain because social media is a relationship and you can't have a relationship one day and then decide you don't want to in a month's time. Absolutely. We've seen some mishaps happen when uh, people take yes. that approach. So you talked a little bit about having your goal in mind beforehand. In social media specifically, do you think that might change as people uh, tweak their campaigns? I think it will do, yes, potentially. It's, I think you have your overarching goals. If you consider the big picture, then a corporation has its overarching goals, and then PR has its goals mm -hmm. that hopefully tie into those of the overall organization, and it sort of filters down. And then you have your campaign goals that filter into what your PR goals are. And I think that social media needs to fit in with that as well. And sometimes it's good to try a few new things in social media and not be afraid that they may not work. Um, I think that a lot of people shy away from measurement because they think it's going to make them accountable. Yes, it does make you accountable. But see that as a positive rather than a negative. It's not your exam paper, pass or fail, but it's more the opportunity to learn how to do things differently next time as well when things haven't quite gone the way you want them to go. Mm -hmm. So clearly you're very passionate about measurement and research and really understanding your discipline before you take any new approaches. What yeah. inspired you to, to take that approach in your work and, and why do you do the work that you do? Well, personally I love measurements, evaluation, analysis, research, any of those things, but I love to be able to couch it in a way that is going to be meaningful to the audience and actually helping sometimes with that translation from a deck of figures to something that's going to bring insights that are actionable and be compelling to the C-suite or whatever uh, who often don't have a lot of time in those areas. So to me it is actually being that catalyst for change as well as seeing a job well done. That I really get a buzz out of in that sense to be able to take something and make something of it to show that something has worked or how it could be made better and be able to brainstorm ideas of how to go about doing different things and 
I really like it when the measurement element comes in at the very beginning, at the goal setting, at the strategy, helps shape some of that, where there's research done up front before you even start mm -hmm. to make sure that the big idea is actually in line with where people are at and things like that. So right. yeah, anything like that is something that I feel passionate about because I, I love to see people being successful in what they do. And, I, I believe that research and measurement has a big part to play in that. Great. So clearly in your experience you've had to set up campaigns to be successful and to do that you need to work with many different departments mm -hmm. in the organization. Any tips for people starting out uh, new campaigns, working with new groups, how to get their message across? I think that while I'm very enthusiastic, one of the biggest things is to help manage expectations that things don't change overnight and some things are going to be more successful than others so as to make sure that people don't overcommit, but they commit enough to get really solid buy-in and as I say manage those expectations of what those outcomes should look like you know I, the, one of my favorite phrases is when I'm talking with someone is well what would success look like to you what would what would constitute success and actually understand what that is and see then if I consider that from my experience realistic or not or how they might go about getting there. And so I think managing expectations is one of the biggest areas, but also allowing strong buy-in from lots of areas, that it's not public relations working on its own, but actually working across the company wherever possible and helping other people of the success, it's not all down to PR to make things happen, um, and particularly when you look in social media, right. even more so. So it's actually helping to set a framework that allows the company to be successful rather than just the PR department sometimes. But then if the PR department takes the credit, all the better, <laughs> I'm sure. But you know, it's it's good like that, sure. and see you know budgets getting increased and mm -hmm. things like that that happen because there's solid data to substantiate and back that up, back up what's happened. Great. So what did you think of the IABC session today? Did you get a lot of good questions from the participants? I did, and actually I really like the fact that people wrote questions at the table of some of their biggest challenges before. So while we were eating, everyone had cards and they could write some of their biggest challenges. And I found that very helpful because I got to read them, <laughs> scan them very quickly beforehand and actually understand where some people were coming from. And they were the wide range from how do I communicate with the C-suite to, as an agency, how do I get my client to put money aside for measurement to looking at questions on social media, internal communications. There was a wide gambit and it was great then when looking at the step two of the actual Barcelona principles, which was looking at a validated metrics grid and a social media grid, that to actually see how some of those questions could be addressed mm -hmm. in those grids. Right. I don't know if you would agree that you could see how some of those mm -hmm. came through. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think it, it says a lot um, the IABC Chicago chapter really tries to structure its programs in response to what its members are asking for, and I think it speaks very loudly to say that we've asked for a session on measurement. Um, but what do you think is next? What What do you think people are going to be looking for once they get a grip on, you know, on their goals and what they're looking for? How How are we going to further improve this process? Well, it's always a working process. You know, it, there is no silver bullet to, to measurement. It is a work in progress and. I think it's looking at, there's so many different channels these days through which to communicate that it's looking at what is the appropriate measurement metrics for each of those. And so I always recommend people with start small and then grow it. Because prove that what you're doing is working, but then look to see how you can actually be more sophisticated. And wherever you're at now, as long as it's not ABEs, <laughs> but wherever you are now, look to do a little bit there's lots of tools out there to be able to try and I think that maybe the next step might be to look at well what are some of these tools and what are some of the experiences people have. There's service providers but there are free tools as well. Agencies have in-house tools they use and to actually get an appreciation of some of the tools out there because it's, it's, it's like you know if you're cooking a meal you, know, you need more than a wooden spoon. You need the right tools to do certain, certain things and therefore I think 
with the variety of tools that there are out there, it's finding the right tools to actually accomplish what your goals are in terms of measurement. Excellent. Well, Pauline, thank you so much for your time. And members, we look forward to seeing you at our next IABC Chicago event.